Welcome in this session. We are going to learn some basics about the logical and uh, physical PostgreSQL architecture. So I have placed everything in a notepad and we are going to continue from there. So th this, this particular topic is all about the logical and physical uh, architecture of uh, PostgreSQL. So the first thing is uh, PostgreSQL has been popular from so many years because of this is one of the most uh, uh, famous open source relational database. And if we say in terms of its position, it is considered as number one position in terms of the open source relational database. So just talking about the few of the concepts, uh, the first thing in this PostgreSQL is what is a PostgreSQL cluster? So if we say PostgreSQL cluster, this cluster doesn't mean the cluster which we know about in the the clustering world it doesn't mean the n number of nodes which are uh, joined together to form as a unit in case of postgresql a cluster is a collection of databases which is hosted on a, a postgre server so that that's all about, uh, that, that's all about the postgresql cluster so in one cluster there may be many databases in one database there may be many objects and a data object is it can uh, store the object at the same place or it can refer to some some uh, remote location as well so in postgresql world we'll say a database is also called as the database objects so just to show you a small uh, bit of the demo a bit of demo uh, so it's all about uh, so when you install the cluster uh, postgresql when you install it uh, let's say on linux then one of the step final step which you perform is you execute uh, postgresql version number setup and init db that means you initialize the database once you do that in the in the particular location it is going to create a number of directories and subdirectories which stores the information directories of and uh, files uh, so we discussed about postgresql cluster then we we are going to discuss about what is oid which is object identifier right so uh, in in PostgreSQL, the object identifier or OID is called as the the objects inside the uh, inside the PostgreSQL they are stored as uh, object identifier. So they are just four byte integers, and uh, uh, that 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 holds some kinds of relationship. So let me quickly show you how it works. So let us create one database and uh, then we will see what is an OID of that particular database. So let's say PSQL. We have these many databases and if I simply say select uh, uh, dat name comma OID from PG underscore database and we created a database with the name test DB So this is the object identifier. This is unique uh, inside uh, the PostgreSQL cluster And uh, you can find the uh, uh, Relative name as well using this command which is for PG underscore class so here also oh, Okay uh, I should have given the table name over here Again, we will have this thing uh, in in uh, going forward. So let's talk about the physical structure of PostgreSQL. So when you install the PostgreSQL cluster, so the one thing which comes is the base directory, right? So I'll show you how it looks like. So this is my data directory. If you simply say um, PSQL show data underscore directory then it will show you this location where all the database related files are stored so the, this creates all the uh, directories and files when you initialize your database and uh, when we are when we are talking about the base directory uh, it is created at this location. So if you see there will be a directory called as base over here Can you see this this is base directory uh, Coming out 
uh, to discuss about some of the files and subdirectories under the base directory so let me show you over here ls hyphen r ls hyphen ltr grab conf we just wanted to see what are the different configuration files so one of the important file over here is uh, pg underscore version so where is that pg underscore version here it is so if you view this you will be able to see the version of the database uh, that's the major version of this postgresql cluster along with that there are n number of configuration file one is postgresql.conf which can which consists all the configuration related parameters of postgresql uh, cluster and there is another file which is uh, relevant to this which is postgresql.auto.conf that means if you have uh, executed any alter system and if there is a dynamic parameter which can be changed while the database is running and it doesn't require a restart then it will be stored over there and your instance postgresql instance or cluster is going to read it from here it will be overwritten by the alter system command so there is another file which is very very important it is pg underscore host based authentication dot conference uh, configuration file that means the client authentication happens through this file so all the information related to the client like how they are getting authenticated uh, what should be the uh, the database name what should be the IP and what kind of authentication it has to go through that all is mentioned in pg underscore hba.con file so if you just view this it will look something like this so this this has the host name and uh, uh, let's say uh, what is the database name what is the username what is the IP and what kind of authentication method it has to go through so that is there in hba.con file there is another important file which is called as pg underscore identity dot conf it, this file contains the information related to user mapping so that information is stored over here so we discussed five important files and then moving on to the directories and subdirectories so we will not uh, from here we we will not try to navigate but that will be confusing so I'll, I'll show you base so when you initialize your cluster uh, this is my location you will see something called as base over here if you cd to uh, base you will be able to see these files which contains the oids of the different databases which are created in your uh, pg uh, postgresql cluster so base it it is having per database subdirectory so these are the oids of the different databases which are uh, created inside this postgresql cluster second one is global uh, this particular uh, uh, directory contains the information related to the uh, cluster wide tables so if you just go through that pg uh, this global you will be able to see these files we will discuss what are these FSM and uh, VM related uh, names we have something called as pg underscore commit underscore ts that means it contains the information related to the transaction commit timestamp data and this is present from 9.5 and the later version pg underscore uh, clock this is obsolete you have something called as pg underscore dy and schem so this contains if you see dynamic uh, this is this stands for dynamic shared memory so dyn is dynamic shm is shared mem is memory so this uh, contains the information about the dynamic shared memory we have something called as pg underscore logical it contains the data related to the logical decoding and this has and most of these features are available from 9.4 onwards we have something called as pg underscore multi exact 
it contains the information related to multi transactional status data you have something called as pg underscore notify which in contains the information about the listen and notify related data you have something related called as pg underscore wrap slot so this particular uh, uh, directory is required or this particular configuration is required when you perform the replication from one node to another in PostgreSQL. You have something called as pg underscore serial. It contains the committed serializable transaction. You have something called as pg underscore snapshot. It, it contains the exported snapshot and this has been available from a version I believe 9.0 onwards. You have uh, pg underscore stat which contains the information related to the statistics. You have uh, something called as pg underscore stat underscore temp which is related to temporary files for the statistics subsystem. You have uh, something called as pd subtrans. It contains the information related to subtransaction status data. We are not going to discuss the detail because this is going to be very very lengthy and uh, we'll try to see it in some other session so we have something called as pg table space it contains the symbolic link to the table space wherein you are going to store your, uh, your data you have something called as pg underscore two phase which contains the information related to the uh, prepared transaction you have uh, this the next one is pg underscore wall which is right ahead logging and uh, um, you have something called as pz underscore exact and xlog. These are the different directories uh, which are available uh, over here. So you simply say ls and you will be able to see it. It is it is not important you learn about these, but it sh you you should be knowing uh, most of these. Then we have uh, files layout structure in database. So a database is available in the direct subdirectory under the base uh, directory. So if you cd to base, you will be able to see few directories over here. So these are the OIDs of the different databases which you have created. So you can see one demo database and one test DB and there is one, two, three, four, five, total five. And you will be able to see total of five uh, uh, directories over here. So these are related to the different databases, which are some of the system databases and uh, remaining are uh, user created databases. So if you wanted to, to uh, relate it, you can just uh, execute this. Uh, select uh, dat name comma oid from pg underscore database so you can see 16390 16390 it is the oid of test db if you try to find out the oid of the default database which is postgre database you will be able to see it it is 14172 14172 so this is how it is related and uh, if we now if you wanted to know how is the layout of the different tables and in indexes which is stored inside the particular Postgre uh, database, uh, then you can do it like that. So uh, let's let's say uh, let's switch to some table, uh, connect to one of the data uh, database which is test TV. And let's create a table. So we'll create a table called as course. We'll select data. Table is created. Uh, let's verify the rows. There's nothing. Let's insert some rows. You can see there are three rows inserted. And if you simply say uh, the, uh, find out the OID and other information related to that particular table. You can execute this and you can see that OID of uh, this particular uh, uh, table is 16397 and uh, let us go where we have created it. We have created it inside the test DB and let's come out of this and let's go to uh, test DB test DB is 16390 16390 this is the OID of the database 
and uh, the we created two tables over uh, one table over here uh, um, and uh, the OID is 16397 that should be available 16397 so this is the uh, OID of the table which is created so this is how it is related and uh, if you simply wanted to see the um, relevant path uh, it will be available uh, inside the base so I hope you are already aware what is PGA underscore data which is a global uh, variable for for uh, displaying the location of the data underscore directory you can find out the complete location using this command as well so we'll say psql slash l uh, let's connect to test db and execute this command so you will be able to see the complete uh, relational file path name of the table which we have created and inside that we have seen uh, in that particular uh, oid uh, we have seen some of the files with the name fsm and uh, and uh, vm that that contains the information related to the uh, to the table so that that data is stored over there so if the file size of the table and index it, it goes beyond 1 gb then it is going to create a new file with the uh, relative file node and dot uh, one dot two and this way it it goes on so if you wanted to change uh, the size uh, you can uh, do it you can uh, make the change using the hyphen hyphen with the segment size uh, uh, name and it is going to work so so that, that's that's all about the physical and uh, logical structure so just a recap postgresql cluster it's not the cluster it is just the the instance which you create on one of the node so it is it is a cluster only right in in one cluster there will be several databases and uh, one database can have many objects the simple uh, the uh, the simple things like any relational database so you have oids this is the important thing in postgresql so all the objects uh, including your database also they are identified with the object ids and they, they are, this information is in, stored inside the database inside the uh, some of the important uh, uh, catalog tables then talking about the physical structure you have some of the important file uh, there are four uh, important conference uh, configuration file one is uh, postgresql.conf which inf uh, contains the information related to the uh, postgresql cluster you have something called as auto.conf postgresql auto.conf so if any dynamic changes are made and that doesn't require a restart so those information will be stored over here so you have uh, uh, pg underscore hba which is host based authentication relation details are there then you have identity related details are stored over here these are the subdirectory details uh, and this is uh, available inside your data underscore directory and uh, we have seen some of these important uh, uh, directories and subdirectories which are available files layout we have seen how the oids are displayed on the operating system and that's the way it is mapped to the database and inside the particular uh, database you can find the different tables which are stored as the oids and and finally we saw uh, how the tables are stored inside the database uh, directory and how their uh, relative uh, relational file uh, file path name we can locate using some commands and uh, the data is actually stored in those in, in in these two formats underscore fsm and underscore vm and uh, you can uh, check the size or you can control the size till what size uh, it can grow and it has to create a new file and that's how it works i hope this is going to help thank you